everyone. Thanks for attending this talk. Uh, my name is David, and I, I am the creator of an app called Bilinguap. Uh, I am also um, an Android developer at eBay Klein and Saigon here in Germany. So I, I built this app um, yeah, on, on my free time after work and on the weekends. Um, I will try to make this talk about how uh, I could make that happen by using very specific uh, tools and, and the tools and the features inside these tools. Um, it's not going to be very technical, but I, I think it's, uh, it's very useful if, if you're planning on doing something similar to this uh, side project. So I will start by showing, telling you about uh, Bilingua. What is the app? It's, it's a language learning application, and, and the magic that it does is that it can, it can help you learn by just reading text, and it has text in your native language and in the language that you want to learn side by side. You can also select a particular sentence, and it gets, it gets highlighted on both sides. And, and the other thing that it does is that it works it works as an audiobook, and that means you can just press play, and you will listen to the voice of a person, a real person, uh, narrating the, the, the text in the language that you want to learn, and it has also some kind of karaoke animation that goes through the text. So it's, uh, it's different, uh, and people have found it useful so far. Um, in general, I will talk now a little about how, how the organic uh, downloads happen, right? Mostly it's because it has a very good rating. It's, it's the best rated language learning Android app. It has 4.8 stars. As a reference, uh, the biggest one, of course, Duolingo or, or uh, Rosetta Stone, they have 4.7, 4.5, and they are much more robust products than, uh, much more robust products than this. Um, and this small advantage, at least it gets me uh, just the users that make that the decision making, the, the, the one that gets the highest rating. If there is a group of people who download an app because of its rating, then at, at least I got that one, right? Uh, it was also named by Google Play as one of the top five language learning apps. Well, they have this editorial page in which they mentioned five different uh, language learning apps. This, of course, gives me a lot of validation uh, because it's coming from, from Google. It has been featured in the Play Store uh, a couple of times. This is actually very, very hard. Uh, they are very demanding, so they keep sending me emails about, you have to change this in the new release, change this, and you have to follow their rules, obviously, if you want to get featured. But it's worth it, because it gets you really a lot of downloads as well. And having editor's choice and Android excellence, these are all factors that come into um, proving that it's a good quality product and then people start to download it uh, without the whole marketing part that all of the other apps do and that I will definitely have to do eventually, right? But at, at this point, it has been all organic. And um, I guess the first thing that people ask me when, when, when I tell, you, tell them about this is how did you do it, right? The shortest answer is by following the Lean Startup methodology, uh, very agile, very iterative, and by putting a lot of passion into it. So it's not gonna work if, if you don't really have passion for it. You have to work very hard. I don't know if you recognize this photo. It's from a video from Google I.O. Uh, 17. It's called uh, The Story of an Idea. It's super, super inspirational. Um, it talks about, it's just a three minute video, but it's, it shows a lot of how about growing your product and getting it to heights. Um, so the organic growth, the, the more specific reason that, that people download the app is because it's ranked high. So when you search for learn languages, you will usually see this, uh, these apps. Um, Bilingua will all usually be between the sixth and the tenth place. Uh, and people who scroll all the way to the sixth or the tenth place, they are the ones who download. Again, the group of people who make the editor's choice or the, gr or the grade, um, the factor, uh, those are the ones who download the app. And they are not a lot, but they are at least enough that it has accumulated to more than a million users so far. Um, the, these things are really important factors, right? Having the editor's choice, having the, the Android excellence, they are all accumulating into getting into this point. Um, the last of the abstract stuff focused on quality. If you have to learn one thing from this talk, I would definitely make it this phrase, which is the best way for your product to go viral is to have a great product. This phrase is not from me. I, I heard in, um, I guess, one of the Y Combinator videos. And, and it's very, very important because at the beginning, mostly at the beginning, I still do a lot of that, but mostly at the beginning, 
all of my efforts were about making people love the app. So I didn't care about uh, marketing or, or monetization. It was just about getting all the feedback possible from the users and translating that into features or removing all the bugs until people started liking it more, until the feedback was mostly positive, 90% positive, until I got the 4.8 stars. So when you focus on quality, uh, you make the people like it. Um, so another of the phrases is always like, it's much better to have a small group of people love your app than a lot of people just like it. So if you have this in mind, it gets much easier. Uh, so I will talk a little about the tools that I have used for this. Uh, these are tools that you already know. Uh, you have heard about them. Um, it, they are just kind of hidden inside, inside a much more robust product. So the Google Play Console, uh, it's much more than just a place where you put your APK. It also has a lot of useless features, uh, at least for my case. In many cases, uh, they try to sell you translations that are super expensive. Uh, but if you look around, you will find specific things that you can find very useful. I will tell kind of the story of the, the, the things that I actually used. Um, so in my first release, uh, of course, you don't want to just send an APK through the email uh, to have people uh, take a look at your app because then they have to go to the developer now to the settings and unknown sources and make it enable and so so the, the easiest way is to just make a better release you get a link send the link to the people they just have to click once and accept and then they are able to download the app and once you're able to to um, to distribute this alpha or beta version to, to just a limited number of people, you can tell them to share it with more. That's, that, that's not a problem. As long as it's not public, because it's still a product that has to be improved. But you also can tell them to write a review. So the review, uh, the part of the analysis of the review is, is actually really useful because it recognizes the specific parts that are most, that are loudest. So in this case, the stability has, was a problem in this moment. Uh, but what does exactly does that mean? Well, they have these specific keywords that they look for. So the word error used to show up a lot. And then when you see only those that have the word error, then you know exactly where the, where the error is. When, when your product is robust or big enough that, that it's not really easy to filter them out, this tool really helps you a lot. At least it did in my case. And this one is one of the, 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 the coolest ones, actually. So you can, you can um, do A-B test with your listing page, and you can ch change the description or the title or the icon, uh, and the screenshots. Um, I like the app, I mean the, the, the icon of the app, uh, but for some reason I made an A-B test and the result was that the Spanish-speaking markets prefer the blue icon. I really don't know why, uh, it's not really important, but what is important is that I get 18% more downloads if I change that color. So, of course, I did it. If you go to the website now, if you just click uh, L equals ES, you will see it in Spanish and you will see this icon. And you can, you can do the same for the descriptions or, and for many other things. I haven't done all of those things. I really don't have time to do it, uh, all of those things. But it's very good to know that, it's, that there's a possibility. And speaking of that, if you want to know where to focus and where to make those changes. This is also a really useful tool. The numbers are not very clear, unfortunately, but I will, I will try to describe them. So uh, the app has a 28.8% of, of conversion rate. That is only 28.8% of people who get into the page actually end up installing the app. But you can get um, uh, a report about which countries and their behavior. So in Mexico, that number actually goes up to 40%. So I am from Mexico and there's relatively some press about it. So people like reading the story about this guy from Mexico who built an app. So it's kind of understandable that it has a much more success there. In Russia, it actually goes down to 26. So what does that tell me? Well, that I have to either create an experiment, uh, change the icon, change the description or the screenshots for the Russian market to make that number go high. But this is the only tool that will actually tell you this information so that you're able to change that. Uh, the other tool that I uh, will talk about is Firebase, and I know you have been super bombarded uh, by Google to, to use this. 
mm, it's a similar situation. It has really a lot of features. Uh, a lot of them are, are, are very, very useful. I will talk about the ones that I have used. Uh, they keep adding more. Some of them are useful, and some of them, at least for my case, they have not been, and you probably have similar experiences. So one thing that I really found useful was the notifications. The notifications in my app are really dumb. I just send the same notification to everyone. I don't have a system in which I recognize which user does what. Uh, again, I just, I just don't have time to build that. But uh, what I can do is to send a notification using this console, and it will give me a really good analysis of, of how many uh, were sent, how many of them were opened, and how many of them ended up converting into whatever your uh, your KPI is, right? And you can also just experiment. So if I send a notification, every time that I upload a new story for, for the app, I, I test with a different uh, text for the notification. And then I can, I can see which one is more successful in the end. And I, of course, have a place where I will compare these numbers and then end up, of course, using the one that has been more successful. And notifications in general are, of course, a huge way to, to get your users to come back to the app. Mm, this is probably the one that I like the most. Uh, it's the A-B testing uh, experiments. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure how, how many or, or which A-B testing tools uh, you have used. For me, this is the easiest one to use because it's very, very focused on, on, on apps. Basically, it allows you to distribute different uh, variables, different versions of, uh, of, uh, of the app, well, not versions, different variables that you can then use in the app to change the experience for the users. It allows you to, to put some KPIs, the one that you want to, to improve. In this case, I use story finish. I want more people to finish a story because that is the wow moment. That is a moment where they actually have the feeling that they have finished reading a story in a new language. And that's the moment I, I want everyone to reach. So that's the one I consider my North Star. So I want to improve that number. Now, this particular experiment was the first time the user enters a screen of, uh, of a story, I would automatically download it without them pressing the download button. Uh, I would show a toast, telling them, hey, I am doing this only for the first time. So I, of, I was, of course, afraid that users would either come less to the app or give it a bad rating. A lot of people don't like when you just take decisions for them. Um, but by putting this experiment for only half of the users, I realized pretty much all of the numbers went up. So it's not so much. It's only between 0 and 7%. That's the number of story finished. But that's how you grow, just little by little. And just by making sure that all the other numbers are not going down, the retention even, even, uh, even went higher. Uh, this is the only tool that would allow you to do it like that, at least from, from the Firebase environment, right? Um, so financial info. So my app has in-app purchases. So this is the way I, I, I've, I monetize it now. Again, after I already made sure that everyone likes it. Um, these are all fake numbers, but at least this is correct. You can analyze the in-app purchase event, uh, which is basically automatically tracked. And it will tell you the conversion rate uh, and the average purchase value. And you can filter that by country or, or by any other way, uh, way of filtering, but country is super important. Uh, this is fake data, but at least this is true. The Americans, and you already knew this, the Americans spend more money in the app. And the conversion rate is much higher, and they spend, money, they spend much more money per person. And by doing this kind of analysis, you know and you can also find out the opposite. You can also find out in which countries that you are supposed to be doing at least average, you are doing uh, under average. And that way you can target these people and either send them a notification only to them for a promotion or any other way to get more money from the markets that you are performing the worst. Um, yeah, the last two couple of things I will mention about Firebase. Uh, this one I have not used, predictions. It's there, but I, I haven't been able to, to, have, to find time to target these users. Um, you can find out which users will churn. Churn is to leave. So uh, people who churn are people who just install the app once, maybe use it once, and then never use it again. And because Firebase also has analytics, they use machine learning to get all the information from people who have had a specific behavior and, and then just and you can target them with a 90% accuracy. Who of the users will churn based on their behavior? And to those, you can again either target, send them a notification, 
uh, or send them some, or maybe lower the price of the of the premium package. I think just anything you want. Um, this is super uh, effective, uh, or at least if you trust it. Um, and the remote configuration, super simple, right? There's just something you can configure remotely, some variable you want to change. The example I am putting here is that I put the story of Alice in Wonderland on top. It's one of the, of the, of the stories that people like the most. It's one of the stories that people um, buy the most because that one is paid. So I just remotely change the one that I, that I want to be on top. Uh, I can also put a free story on top, or if something is super exciting, whatever, uh, a new story that I see people are, are reading more, I can just change it remotely at any time, no need for a release, right? And you can do this with a lot of things. So, um, a little more about growth. How did the getting feature and the editor's choice happen? Well, I don't have to tell you this, you know. Uh, by following the material design guidelines, that is what is one of the most important things. It's not guaranteed that by following those, you will get featured, but if you don't, you're gonna have a harder time doing it. Um, and it's just, it's just a Google thing, you have to play by the rules. Uh, I'm not happier about it than you are, but, but it's, it's just how it works. Uh, but it's very useful, so once you have it, uh, it really, really makes a difference about uh, the number of downloads that you get. And be proactive, which basically just means be annoying. I, I have been in contact with them, I send them emails all the time with the Firebase team, with the play review teams, uh, I, I, I know them, I have them in LinkedIn, so just the fact that they know that you exist, at least when you actually send them an email about something, they are more likely to reply or to take you into account. I am 100% sure, at least the Android excellence, I would not have it if I was not just sending them emails all the time, telling them, hey, how can I get this, who do you think I can get it, what do I need? So that proactivity actually makes a difference. Uh, another thing that I do is I try to get as much free advertising as, as possible. Uh, free, I mean that I don't pay for it, but it's actually taking some effort. Uh, I wrote a text once called How to Build a Tech Startup with No Money and No Time. I basically pitched it. I just wrote emails to some blogs and asked them if they wanted to publish it until I found one who did. It was uh, UK, Tech, uh, UK Tech News, I think was the name. I also take part in some startup competitions, and every time you win one of those, you get some advertising. Uh, I was also lucky enough to be in the cover of a Mexican newspaper called El Universal. And once I just released, I just made some funny release notes, uh, which I do all the time, but some person saw them and posted them on Reddit, and that got, it got really high, and it got me a lot of downloads. So this is the kind of thing, it's also related to the proactivity. So the more you are on top of those things, uh, you are much more likely to get more just organic downloads. Uh, finally, I will talk to you about what growth hacking means in general. It's just everything I have just talked about. And, and I, I, don't, I really don't like the phrase either. It sounds kind of like unethical, but it just really means that if people like the product, they will share it. So you basically just have to find the right moment to tell them to share it, right? And the screenshot here is exactly when you finish reading a text, and I already mentioned this, when you finish reading a text in a language that you thought you didn't know, you are much more likely to, to feel happy about the app. So that's the moment when you tell them, hey, you want to share this with your friends, right? That's kind of, uh, there's a very famous story of Hotmail who they basically just added in the, in the, in the end of every email, hey, you want your Hotmail account, click here. And that went super viral and it made them grow. Not all of the growth hacks are gonna work like that. These, these things only work if the product is actually good enough. So that's why actually you have to focus on the quality before you can try any, any growth hacks at all. And finally, I will recommend you some books. Uh, if, if this is a path you want to take, um, these are the books that helped me the most. The Lean Startup, of course, it's like the Bible. It's just the, the, how you actually create a product in the most efficient and risk-free way. Uh, I really like this book called Trust Me, I'm Lying. It's, it's about how the media works and the tech block, or not tech blocks, just blocks in general. Uh, deep work, it, it helps you with techniques on how to focus. I have to be very, very efficient with my time because I have a normal job, so I, I only do these things on my, on my free time, at least for now. Um, so that one helped me a lot. And Hacking Growth, the book, that one just has, that's more like a manual. It has a lot of uh, tricks and techniques that other companies have done. They explain you how they work. And every time you listen, I, I, I listen to them as audiobooks, but every time you go through them, uh, you get more ideas and more inspiration. So I, I would definitely recommend reading those if, if that's something you want. And that's it. I want to thank you very much for coming, and I hope you found it interesting.